Greetings. You have found a place to belong here in the circle of friends, and we welcome you to the table. This morning, um, we are on the fourth day of our week, and I'm sitting here with Beth, and I'm sitting here um, with a new friend today, Connie Evans, and welcome to the table. Thank You've been here before, yes, and I th- and I feel like I've sat here before with you. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have just been having a sweet time this week talking about how our faith is lived out mm-hmm. in the world, mm-hmm. um, and how the world should see our lives lived out and fruit and um, you know just the all of the illustrations that God uses throughout Scripture about trees bearing fruit. And so my brain went to when our lives are. Uh, entangled in sin, mm. you know, and, and just how the weeds of the world can, can drown out the seed of God's word, mm-hmm. um, in our lives. And so how God's word can literally be rendered fruitless in our lives by the weed mm-hmm. and by the word, mm-hmm. the world and, and the things that grow up to choke it. Mm-hmm. Um, sin being one of the things that can grow up in our lives and really choke out mm-hmm. the impact of God's word in our lives. Um, and so, um, I don't know. My brain was going a bunch of different places. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to throw that open for a topic. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, and it came upon, as I was thinking, about my trip to Ephesus and when I walked the path of Paul mm-hmm. in, in Oh, my Ephesus. word. I'm sorry. I'm so jealous right now. <laughs> it was, I cannot tell you what came over me mm-hmm. as I walked that path and walked through the ruins. And I'm reminded of the second chapter of Ephesians. And you he made alive when you were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. Among these we all once lived in the passions of Mm -hmm. our flesh, Mm -hmm. following the desires of body and mind. And so we were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and made us sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. And I'm reminded of the role of grace Mm. in all of this Mm -hmm. journey Mm -hmm. and how God's grace, when it's bestowed upon us, and maybe in our weakest moments, that grace is most evident. And as I walk through those steps in Ephesus, the library, the paths, the, the even the bathrooms that they had created in this civilization that was unbelievable. And I looked at, at the surroundings. I was filled with the spirit of Paul mm-hmm. as he attempted to teach these Ephesians the way of Christ and the grace that surrounds us in those moments. And I think that's where it's, it's so hard to really come to terms with our weaknesses and get past that, move on, move forward. It, it is a step. Mm-hmm. It is a step. And, and it's a leap of faith. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That grace is, is what we find when we steep, <laughs> when mm-hmm. we abide. When, as, as Jesus says in John 15, you know, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Abide in me. And it's, it's his grace working through me, the branch, that that causes the fruit to grow. It's not the branch. It's it's the sap. It's the Holy Spirit. It's God's in word us. abiding in That's us. That's right. Mm-hmm. It's it's the branch is it's just a stocky thing. And, and if, if there's nothing flowing through it, you're not gonna get fruit on the other thing, on the other side. Um, but it's when we abide in him. As as you were talking about those paths in Ephesus. And that trip is probably a day in and of itself that we could sit here and talk Absolutely. about your journey. Oh. But I was reminded of, of the different times we read in the Gospels about the parable of the soil, mm-hmm. right? And those, those rocky hard paths, the seed doesn't take. They're just, 
well, it may go down a little and something will sprout up, but it gets choked out. But it also talks about how the weeds come and overtake the, the good seed. But ultimately, it all comes back to when the harvest happens. I think my part individually is to remember that I can't control anybody else. But I do need to be taking a look at the soil of my soul. And I do need to be coming back to the Word and to the Lord and saying, Lord, where, what am I hanging on to and making very tight and hard and rocky that I just need to yield and allow you to cultivate the good soil in my soul to, to take out those those weeds that have have grown up and and to plant the good seed see the soil i believe each one of us has has had the opportunity to be each of those soils right mm. the footpath the the rocky soil the soil that's cluttered with weeds and also the good soil i think it's coming back to the master gardener, to, to the one who created us, to the author of this word of life, and saying, Lord, till me. <laughs> uh, do what you have to do. Plow, plow all of this. I yield my spirit, my soul, my soil to you. Remove the way. weeds. Remove the rocks. Do what only you can yeah. do. Therefore, be imitators yeah. of God. As beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. We go back to a fragrant offering and sacrifice to mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Paul does lay out the rules. He talks about the rules to the Ephesians, the rules of life, what they need to give up. Mm -hmm. And like we've said before, it's so foreign. It's so mm -hmm. different than what they expected. Mm -hmm. Yielding giving up those things, turning the cheek, loving that, one another. That's yeah. not our first inclination as, no. as children. I just had my grand boys for a week. I heard the word, mine, no. Uh -oh. you know? <laughs> I saw the little tips about toys. We're not so different as adults mm -hmm. unless we are intentional about recognizing we got to keep our hands open and allow God to put into our hands, our lives, what it is he has for us, his best, and to allow him to take what it is that is his anyway. He's the owner of it all. And that's lordship. That's lordship. Allowing God to be the Lord of our life and allowing it to be his decision what he brings in and what he takes. Recently at this uh, conference that I was invited to be a part of, um, I, had to, I had to write a little blurb about uh, the session that I was doing. And um, as I thought about that word yield, because I did use that word as I spoke, um, what I realized is that in yielding, I admittedly was a micromanager, right? I, I, I yielded all that I thought was mine to control, and boy, I, there was a whole lot that wasn't mine to control that I wanted to control also. But I yielded all that was in my world, and God allowed me to move from that point of micromanaging to the position of steward. And both of those positions are management, right? So I, I still do the same thing that I've always done, but I've unclasped my hand. And it's with an open hand that I steward all that he's given me. That's what I wanted to do over, over here on that side of holding on and not yielding. I wanted to do the best for my kids. I wanted to... Um, I wanted to have a good result financially, physically, emotionally, spiritually, family-wise. And I wanted that, but I was trying to do it in my own strength. Yielding, hmm, surrendering, submitting, abiding is what finally... And, and I, I don't have this perfectly, folks. It's kind of like the treadmill. I can go at it pretty good for a couple of days or weeks, and then I fall off. 
but in reminding myself, this is what's best. This is the attitude my heart, this is the position my heart needs to be in before the Lord. In yielding, there is a peace. There, there is, I can't explain it. Financially, I would tell you, yielding has resulted in us living in God's economy instead of our own. I don't understand it. I don't have to understand it. I don't understand how eating the right food makes me feel better. I don't have to understand it. I just know it works. I've said before, I don't understand how flipping that light switch turns on these lights or how turning up the thermostat makes it warmer or cooler. I still do it. I don't have to understand the how, but I recognize it is so important and in yielding, I'm getting a little better glimpse of the why God has called us to this place of submission. Doing life with him as our guide. I think it's time to take a break, ladies. We're going to take a listen to this, and we will be back. We are so thankful that you've joined us here at the table. you found a place to belong in the circle of friends. Inside me More than I can bear 
you've found a place to belong here in the circle of friends. And I'm back, back at the table with Gwen and Connie and our silent partner, Missy. And it's been a really great week. We've looked at the, the book of Luke a lot. And, you know, coming back off this break, we just were talking about that whole position of yielding, the, the soil of our soul. When we yield it to the truth of God's word, he does a work in it that makes it ready for the seed. But I think about um, what we read early in the book of Luke, uh, Luke 2, in fact, when we're reading the story of the angel who comes and talks to Mary, the mother of Jesus, she gave a great example of a yielded heart, a perfect, perhaps, example of a yielded heart. Verse 38 of, well, Luke 1 says, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. What if we stopped right there? What if those were our words? Lord, I'm your servant. Let it be to me as your word says it should be. That's a yielded heart. The Gospels are such a great example of that yieldedness. You know, Connie, during our break, you mentioned the parents of Jesus and their yieldedness. Tell me the lessons that you've learned from all of that. Well, I think, again, of... Our plans, what we expect, our agenda, as you're mm -hmm, saying, mm -hmm. our ability to try to control a situation mm -hmm. for our own end result, for what we want mm -hmm. and expect. Mm -hmm. And many times, especially with our children. And in this case, we see that even as Jesus it's interesting. He's 12 years old, too, huh. when he goes in that temple. <laughs> there's just that like, 12 again. There's the 12 again, hmm. the 12 years of the hemorrhaging women. And now, of course, you know, the parents, his parents, Jesus, Joseph and Mary, are confused by all of this. Why, why is he staying behind? His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the company, they went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, seeking him. And after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. And he said to them, how is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying which he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. And the yielding of his parents, I mean, in that, in her heart, she had she had questions mm -hmm. she had doubts mm -hmm. she she was stressed there was her child gone and where he was 12 where mm -hmm. is he mm -hmm. and and i can relate to that i think of those those comments in regards to being a parent and also in yielding <sighs> and yielding and allowing mm -hmm. ourselves to trust in the lord mm -hmm. and knowing that that's the path. That's what we have to follow. We have to. We have to. In my translation, in my translation, let's get this word right, um, where yours said he was obedient, mine says he was submissive. Interesting. That's a hard word. Both of those right. are hard words, Both. but they go right along with the word yield, um, surrender. Um, it's all about Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trusting in the Lord with all of your heart and not leaning on your own understanding, but acknowledging Him in all of your ways in order that He will direct our path. And it's also interesting, a few months ago, I visited Lebanon, which is, I'm Lebanese, so obviously <laughs> I went to Lebanon with a church group, uh -huh. and for 14 days we went 
again, <laughs> along the paths, a lot of the paths right. of Christ, right. um, a lot of churches, a lot of, you know, areas that we went through. But very interestingly, there was a beach down below and there was a shrine constructed to Mary. And I asked a native there, why, why is this here? Mm-hmm. And they said she was standing here and her son was on the beach, of course, in Lebanon preaching at the time. Mm-hmm. And she wanted him to hurry up. She wanted him to be finished. And as she looked down, the statue professes Mary again in a, in, in a yielding position, <sighs> yielding to his mission right. and what he was supposed to do and what his will was for her right. as well as a mother, even though she wasn't really happy about that. Mm-hmm. But it was a very interesting look as I looked down on the beach and, and, and trying to recapture the feelings that Mary also must have had mm-hmm. as she gave up you know, mm-hmm. what her agenda was mm-hmm. to Christ's mission. Boy, the mama's heart sitting at this table. I mean, you think about that position of submission. I cannot imagine mm. parenting the Son of God. Yeah. Right. I, you know, Scripture talks about him learning obedience. I I cannot fathom what it would look like to parent him because, mm-hmm. you know, there would never be anything done from a malicious intent. Like, mm-hmm. everything would be from an honorable place thoroughly in his heart. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and so, you know, on one hand, I'm like, they didn't notice he was gone for a whole day. Like, what? <laughs> uh, but on the other hand, this would have been a kid I wouldn't have had to worry about. Mm-hmm. You know, he right. would have been about good things. He would never have been getting into mischief. No. You know, there never would have been anything bad happening. Well, here's another question from a mama who had five kids. Were there younger siblings? Because yeah. if there were younger siblings at that point, um, I can understand why they didn't miss him for a few hours. Or <laughs> That's they thought true. he was taken Understood. care of. So. Yeah, and, they were wrangling the culture. other ones. It's right. Culturally, it's a lot yeah. different than... Uh, you know, helicopter parents today or right. some of the other parenting techniques we see around right. us. Yeah. And Connie, I will have to tell you that while you were talking about going to Lebanon and, and um, you know, the touring there, uh, I think our subject for another day might be the, the word envy or mm-hmm. jealousy because yes. across the table from oh, me, my word. Gwen was turning a little green. A, a little? <laughs> I'm, I'm full grown St. Patty's Day, okay? <laughs> Unbelievable. It's It would be for another whole week I could just discuss uh, the culture, but also just the beauty of the land. Mm-hmm. And and again, the, the feeling of spirituality, of, mm-hmm. of being part of that, uh, you know, so very close. And then also politically, mm-hmm. you know, what's happening there, as well as, you know, the Syrians, the, the refugee, right. being... Uh, a, a part of the culture and yet you know having the advantages the perks of living in the United States and what we have to offer here mm-hmm. and and also that whole idea of yielding mm. uh, you know yielding to where we are in our own time and you know you can't live in the past you mm-hmm. and and people sometimes want that mm-hmm. let's go back let's go back mm-hmm. no Mm-hmm. Sorry that you don't get to do that. Well, it's, but at the same time, you can't understand scripture apart from the context it was originally written in. Right. So there's so much as an American right. that I'm missing, you know, and I've studied and I've learned and built. But man, you you've been to two of the places like <laughs> that I that are on my bucket list spiritually, and one of them is is um, actually Ephesus. Um, to just because there's so much of the New Testament epistles that were written in and around Ephesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got, you've got everything from how the gospel came to Ephesus all the way through, you know, the apostle John being the last remaining disciple. And he takes, you know, he took over Mary at the cross as his mother. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, she literally goes with him to Ephesus and the, the whole focus of the entire church at the time, the hub was Ephesus Mm -hmm. because it was the center of the trade routes. Travel was very easy to get to all the churches. Mm -hmm. And so literally what you have is, is it's, it's literally the hub of the early church. And so like, that's one place that I would love to go. Mm -hmm. Um, 
definitely want a Christian tour guide when I go, though, because mm-hmm. I think you'd miss so much if you didn't have one mm-hmm. who knew the word. And mm-hmm. um, and then I definitely want to go Middle East to just places that Jesus walked and lived and mm-hmm. breathed. And well, I think yeah. in in knowing that history, okay, knowing the origins and the 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 time of the early church is what gives us the passion and compassion for being the church of this century. You know, you got to know where you're at. It gives us our context too. Right. It's the context for what Jesus meant and for what, mm-hmm. you know, the apostles meant when they wrote what they wrote because it can't mean something today that mm-hmm. it did not mean back then. The 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 culture has changed. Correct. But truth has not changed and the heart of man has not changed. No. Nope. So We've got to take that look back and know, okay, this is where, this is why, this is how, in order to bring the truth of God's word to the culture of today, speaking the truth to the heart of man. This is where, this is why, this is how. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it only comes in that act of obedience, submission, the heart that says, not my will, but yours, I love, as much as I hate, and truly, when I read the story of um, the crucifixion from that time in the Garden of Gethsemane through, through all of that, I, it, you know, you read it with one eye closed because I just don't like that. I don't understand why we are so cruel and hateful and hurtful to others. But I love the heart of Jesus. There in the Garden of Gethsemane, I come back to that all the time. Mm-hmm. I can pour my heart out to God and tell him exactly how I would like it to be, what I hope for, what I wish I could avoid. But I love the example he sets when he says, but nevertheless, not my will, but yours. That's a yieldedness. That's the surrender. That's the obedience. That's the submission that we are called to no matter the day, the age, or the place. And we are flesh, which is, again, we can be hurt. We Mm -hmm. can be crippled. We can Mm -hmm. become not only the physicality of that, but the the difficulty of, of, of realizing the magnitude. The magnitude, That's a great word. The yeah. magnitude of it, and also the infliction of pain on others. Mm-hmm. So both sides of that, being able to see both sides of that. Yeah. Life in a fallen world. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for God is with me. He's given us a place to belong. That's why we do what we do. And that's why we journey through in faith. Thanks for joining us here at the table. This program was brought to you through the generous support of donors and listeners like you. To contact Circle of Friends Ministries, you can write to P.O. Box 345, Berlin, Ohio, 44610, or find us on Facebook at circleoffriends.fm. Program archives can be found at thelight959.com. In the heart of Amish country, you will find three wonderful, unique stores. The Village Gift Barn, Country Gatherings, and Moxie. Village Gift Barn is filled with beautiful home decor, a boutique with stylish clothing and jewelry. Country Gatherings takes a step back in time with primitive decor and a garden center. Don't forget to visit Moxie, our big city boutique with small town charm. Located in the heart of Amish country, Village Gift Barn, Country Gatherings, and Moxie.